Okay, welcome everyone. I would like everyone to know that tonight is a very, very special night. Tonight is not a lecture. Tonight we are here in the spirit realm. You are all actually not in your physical bodies. You are in spirit form here at the SSB, okay? And we are here at a very special gathering that you were uh, invited to, and not many got the invitation, as you can see. Only a very select and important few. And the good spirits have dubbed this particular meeting the reincarnatory hour, in which we will discuss the importance of your reincarnation. So hopefully, it's not that we want to go to each individual person and have you speak about it, but we want you to reflect on how you think you're doing in your reincarnation thus far. So this is sort of a check-in, okay? Sort of like when you're doing your thesis for, uh, for school and your advisor tells you, hey, in three weeks, I want you to do a check-in with me. Come bring your paperwork. Let's see where you're at. Let's see how you're doing. That's what we hope to do here tonight. Let's do a check-in or a check-up to see how we're doing. Now, with that being said, we're actually going to be utilizing chapter two of this book. This is where I sit down. Jesus in Our Days. And in the beginning of this particular chapter, Joanna starts out by talking about Jesus and reincarnation and how Jesus was a reincarnationist and that there's no way that his message would have made any sense had he not referred to or believed in reincarnation. I'm going to read just a little snippet for you. And I know that the books are coming soon, so you all can have this book for yourself. But permit me just to read a little snippet of it. And by the way, each of you should have a piece of paper, um, numbers one through 10. I'm also gonna give you a letter, it's actually B. And Aloise, I'm gonna give you A. So keep both, do not open any of your things. Yeah, that's for a little bit later. That's A, I know, or it could be B. My handwriting is, leaves a lot to be desired. So chapter two, Jesus and reincarnation. If Jesus had not been a reincarnationist, his entire message would have been fragmented, devoid of sure support for lack of justice in its highest expression to provide the transgressor a re-educational opportunity with the consequent growth toward freedom. Where would we be without the opportunity to redo and redress our mistakes? It wouldn't make sense. His message of love, growth, of forgiveness wouldn't have made any sense. Can we all agree on that? In your own reincarnation, do you see how, as that is being pertinent and relevant that this new life you were given, although we have all have trials and tribulations, there's all a purpose to it, right? And I'm gonna read you something else he said. This is on page 16 of chapter two. Joanna, Joanna writes, referring to Jesus, his psychotherapy was based on reincarnation because he knew that individuals are the architects of their own destiny, living according to what they decree through their past life deeds. That is why he never condemned anyone, whoever they might have been, and always offered them the chance to right their wrongs and be redeemed before their own conscience, as well as before the divine conscience, mm -hmm. without favoring or disfavoring anyone or anything. He loved everything and everyone selflessly, embracing all humanity, even crying babies, at all times in his ineffable affection. He had sent missionaries throughout the earth speaking the language of reincarnation until he himself came to confirm it, beckoning all with the hope of a blissful future. 
<clears throat> so everything, his psychotherapy, how he dealt with people, and Joanna also goes on to talk about how when Jesus dealt with, when Jesus was dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, he never dealt with the personality, she says. He, he dealt with the individual. I'll say that again. Joanna says that when Jesus was dealing with people, he never dealt with their personality. He dealt with the individual. So he looked profoundly within the individual. He looked at the individual as a whole, as a multitude, a mass of many lifetimes, complexities. Because if you can imagine, if he looked at just one singular personality, you could say the personality of a woman or a man or personality of one particular thing or another would not suffice to help a person. And we truly believe that that's a way and an approach that we should have as well. That when we're dealing with one another, that we try to look at the individual in their totality, which is very difficult because Jesus could see right through us, could see all of us. But it's something just for, important for us to remember that our reincarnation, it truly is a huge gift that each one of us has given. And although it's, you know, when we're going through something difficult, it's hard to see the light sometimes. It's hard to see, oh, this is for a greater purpose. It may be hard for some people to see, well, there's, there's a purpose in all of this, especially when you're going through something. But it's really good to read books like these to be reminded that everything has its purpose. And then, as Paul always says, to ask ourselves, where's the lesson? What's the lesson in all this? Because there is a purpose to it. Nothing's by chance. As I just read, we are the architects of our own lives. A better part of what happens to us has come from a past life that we probably don't even remember anymore. And probably nowadays, we're not that same person anymore we're still finding ourselves reaping those same things. However, there's hope. And that's why in the second half of her message, she brings us hope. So whoever has uh, paper number one, I'm going to ask you to read it. So everyone, please pull out your papers. Who has paper number one? Ida Sama. Please read it. Don't nail yourself to the cross of a guilt. Conscience after your reali real realize your error. And then you're going to find an affirmation that's for you to say. I forgive myself. I deserve happiness. So it, each of you will be reading a small sentence or two from this actual second half of this part with an affirmation that pertains to that. And if you don't mind, I'll be repeating everything that you said because it's good to be repeated. Don't nail yourself to the cross of a guilty conscience after you realize your error. That's pretty wild. Especially for anyone who is religious or spiritist or has any type of belief system, I was just talking to a friend of mine about this, how much um, prejudice we have, and sometimes we don't even realize it. And we have that prejudice against our, our own selves, and we feel guilty or we feel bad for experiencing certain things, or we feel bad if we do something wrong and then we're so hard on ourselves. That's why becoming a perfectionist is really not that great in the sense that, because we become so hard on ourselves, but we don't need to be so hard on ourselves. It's the, don't nail yourself to the cross with the guilty conscience. And Edith Samma read it, the affirmation, I forgive myself. It's so important for us to repeat that because we may not even realize that deep within our subconscious mind, after many errors in past lives, you may not even be forgiving yourself. So it's very good to actually say that, I forgive myself. You may not know for what, but it's good to say. Who has number two? Yasko. Okay. 
don't don't imprison yourself in darkness after you identify your offenses. Affirmation. I forgive myself. I am a child of God. I accept the divine light to enter my being. Yes. Very important. Don't imprison yourself in darkness after you identify your offenses. What does that mean? Don't get stuck in a bubble. After you do some self-observation and you go, oh, shucks, I really am that way. Recently I had a meeting. I had a pre-meeting meeting and we, were doing, we are going to be doing some training and during this uh, pre-meeting, we, we were having someone go over certain things. So and during this pre-meeting, let's call it a meeting, we had to do some self-reflection. And so during this self-reflection, um, we also were asked to name something about the person next to you that you thought they needed to work on. So that was kind of uncomfortable. So <laughs> I had to tell my boss something about herself that I thought she needed to work on. Luckily, I really didn't think she had much that I could, that I didn't, I don't know her outside of work. She's a pretty great boss, so I can't complain. But there was one thing I said to her that I thought that she should work on and she was receptive to it. But I was thinking to myself, the, the other person that was there that evening who got also got told some things seemed a little bit upset at, at the realization that, oh my gosh, I am this way. And I could see in their face that they began to feel bad, begin to sort of get in this dark little bubble. And we don't need to, we don't need to imprison ourselves in darkness after we identify some of our weaknesses or the things that we may have done bad. We don't have to imprison ourselves. That's not the point. The point is for us to learn and to grow and to move forward. Who has number three? Don't feel overly stressed when you discover you were wrong. And the affirmation says, I forgive myself. I am a divine light worthy of joy and happiness. Yes. Don't feel overly distressed when you discover you were wrong. Some of the hardest things for us to say is, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Maybe not for everyone, maybe for some people. Maybe your thing might be something else. Your difficulty might be in a different area. But for some of us, it's very difficult to say, you know what, I'm sorry, I was really wrong. And some people get very distressed with that, very upset. I know I often bring my boss, but she's just a perfect example of a lot of these things. When I told her the thing, she was very accepting of it, but she became very stressed about it the rest of the day. She kept making it a point to say, I'm gonna be more accepting because the thing that I had said to her was, you're not always accepting of other people's ideas. You often just wanna go with your own, which most of the time she's correct, I have to say. But if anyone brings a contrary idea, it's not that she doesn't like it or it's not that she gets upset at it, but she'll always only go with her own ideas. So I said, yeah, I think you should try to be more open to other people's ideas. So the whole day when she saw me, she said, I'm being open to ideas, I'm being open, I'm being open. So I said, okay, okay. So she seems stressed, you don't have to get stressed over it, but she, I think she took it in humor in the end. Don't feel overly distressed when you discover you were wrong. Number four. Number five, get ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rise from the ashes and immediately start preparations. Reparations. Thus, avoiding future expiatory returns, excruciating injunctions, and pain filled situations, Joanna, affirmation. I will rise up unafraid. I love, I have faith, 
I forgive myself. Beautiful. Rise from the ashes. Rise from the ashes and immediately start reparations, thus avoiding future experiences expiatory returns, excruciating injunctions, and pain-filled situations. When I read this, it reminded me of that song, Rise Up. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it. Um, I will rise up. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm not going to sing. But <laughs> it has a really good words to it about, you know, rising up and starting again and moving forward and, and just continuing so I think Joanna is saying here is that, you know, as soon as we recognize that when we've done something, just go ahead and start making reparations for it. What does reparations mean? Go and start to try to fix it, to do better. Don't just wait and lollygag and say, well, I, you know, I have, I have my next reincarnation to figure that out. I've, I've actually heard that qu not quite often, but I've heard it a couple times from different spiritists. Like, well, in my next life, I'll fix that. I'll work that out. But don't wait. Jesus said, go and fix it while you're on the road with your brother. Yes. Number five. Hi, come on in. Come on in, guys. I think so. Me too. She can move that chair. No, no problem. Welcome. 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 Hello, children. <laughs> so, so who has number five? Leah? Go ahead. Ask for forgiveness and adopt a new approach regarding those whom you offended and harmed. Joanna. Affirmation. I forgive myself and I'm free of any feeling of guilt. Ask for forgiveness and adopt a new approach regarding those whom you offended and harmed. Aloisa just said something. I read a bumper sticker once. It said, if you feel guilty for no reason, you're probably a Catholic. <laughs> but ask for forgiveness. Adopt a new, a new approach regarding those you offended and harmed. I was listening to something recently uh, as a reminder, because uh, I've heard this before, that you know, if what you're doing is not working, change it. Do something different. What do they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different outcome? If it's not working, change your approach to it. It seems like the most common sense, but it's actually not that common for people for us to think of that. Because we think that oftentimes our ego, we're correct, I'm right. But sometimes it, it, a mere humility, and as Joanna DeAndres would say, in one of her CDs on health, I believe it is, that she says mo most of our problem is a problem of fixation. We have fixated ideas on particular things instead of being open to new ideas that she talks about in the book Happy Life, and being open to approaching things from a different angle and not the same old angle as we always have. Number six. Who has number? Daniel, you have number six. Number six. If they do forgive you, it will be good for all involved. But if not, understand them and move on, avoiding the same mistake. Joanna, affirmation. I forgive freely. I forgive myself plus other easily. Thank you. If they do forgive you, it will be good for all involved. But if not, understand them and move on. Avoiding the same mistake. This is also a part, in our reincarnation, this is a part of it, guys. This is part of the tidbit 
of this reincarnatory hour that not everyone is going to forgive you when you ask. But keep on moving and avoid making the same mistake. Number seven. Oh, can't hear it. Not on. If you have been wronged, forgive your offenders and detach yourself from them, offering them peace and experiencing the well-being that results from doing what is right. Joanna, affirmation. I forgive others. I forgive myself. Beautiful. If you have been wronged, forgive your offenders and detach yourself from them offering them peace and experiencing the well-being that results from doing what is right. The more we hold on to anger and frustration, especially when it's geared towards one particular person or a group of people, we are attaching ourselves energetically. We're creating this link to them. And Joanna is telling, Joanna is telling us to detach from that. Forgive. Let's move on. Number eight. Number nine, get ready. Your reincarnation is a lofty gift that you must not wait. Joanna, affirmation. I will fulfill my reincarnatory plan. I am a faithful child of God. Beautiful. Your reincarnation is a lofty gift that you must not waste. Number nine's down here. But hold on before you can give it to Aloisa to read. But I wanted to comment on your reincarnation is a lofty gift that you must not waste. So since all of us are here, this is you are not here in physical form. You are here in spirit form. We're just pretending, and obviously, so we know that this is the reincarnatory hour where we're discussing the importance of this reincarnation of this life to take advantage of all of the struggles and heartaches that we're going through and to use it to our own benefit for us to grow. Because as Joanna reminds us, it's a lofty gift. It is an immense gift that we're given to reincarnate, to come back, to redress, and to love those whom we've loved before. Number nine. Each moment is a priceless for your endeavor of sublimation, detachment, and the practice of pure love, Joanna. Affirmation. I'm grateful for this life and I am learning. Beautiful. Each moment is priceless for your endeavor of sublimation, detachment, and the practice of pure love. Right there, she gives us three things to work on. Sublimation, detachment, and the practice of pure love. Three things that are not necessarily easy to just, boom, go and do but something for us to think about. And who has the last one, number 10? Shorter the number of your rebirths by acting up uprightly, of serving tirelessly and joyfully, for as he is state to enter the kingdom of heaven, which extends from your conscience towards the infinite, you must be born again. Joanna's affirmation, I will act uprightly, I will serve joyfully. Beautiful. Shorten the number of your rebirths by acting uprightly and serving tirelessly and joyfully. For as he stated, to enter the kingdom of God, which extends from your conscience towards the infinite, you must be born again. So if we want to shorten the amount of times we have to keep coming back again and again and again and again, what do we need to do? Act uprightly, serve tirelessly, work on sublimation, detachment, and the practice of pure love, amongst many other of the tidbits, I could say, that she had shared with us. Everyone received, I think, at least something 
that I want you to keep. It's for you. You could take it home or you can gift it to someone else to read if you want to. But all of these are pearls that she's sharing with us about not not allowing ourselves to get caught up in the difficulties of this life that we live. And she points a lot towards the emotion of feeling guilty and oppressing ourselves with that guilt, being in darkness because we feel bad. We feel bad or we're angry at others. These are things that can hold us back from our own happiness. These are things that are within our control. So it's something for us to really think about. And if you ever get a chance when the books come in to get this book and to read it and study it frequently, to, it's a great reminder. And they're great reminders and kind of affirmations in a way because they're life affirming. You know, don't nail, don't nail yourself to the cross of guilty conscience, keep moving, keep going. I did forget one little thing that as each of you were reading, I forgot to hand out the little candies. I don't know, some of you had wanted to. Did you want to grab one, Pass? You can pass the box around so I don't have to go right ahead. Sorry, sorry about that. I forgot to get a candy alternative for those who didn't want it, but I give you an extra hug, Paula. That's what I have to offer. Now each one of you, or some of you rather I should say, received another piece of paper with a letter on it. So who has A? Aloisa, please read A out loud. Hug the person next to you. <laughs> They say that we need four hugs a day just for, to, for maintenance to be happy. Four hugs. So, yes, hug therapy is very real and very good. It's free. Who has B? Oh. You have to read your. Read yours out loud. Name three things you're grateful for out loud. I actually picked up an extra calendar this year because I like the Japanese woodcuts. And every night I write the three things. From yesterday or today? Or <laughs> I'm happy to be here with a group of people who believe in reincarnation and have a whole different way of understanding life. I'm happy the big snow went north. And um, I'm just happy to be alive. Wonderful. Who has C? Christopher. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Make sure you read it. All right. Say something nice to the person left of you. I don't need something nice. I, I knew that already. Yeah. I, I repeat it again. We couldn't hear it. What? No, I didn't find that. No, say, say, say something nice to the person left. How about something nice to everybody? No, just the person left of you. No, you're, well, you're nice. I, you know, you only need a lucky lady to have a nice husband, and Vanessa's a lucky guy to have a lucky girl to have a father like you. Oh, you know? that's nice. You know? Very nice. <laughs> Who has D? Irasema. Name two people you are grateful for of why and why. Yeah, and why. Uh, microphone. Oh, okay. Two people. Gioni, she bring me here at SSB. I'm so grateful. And the second one, the God, because I have life, because of him. Amen. Amen. And who has E? <laughs> <laughs> Use the oh, microphone. Sorry. 
give two reasons why reincarnation is important in our spiritual growth, for our spiritual growth. The first reason. Oh my God, I have to get this of that. The first reason is for us to have a second chance to do better. And, uh, and uh, this is a growing thing. And the second one, that if this is me, OK? Because I don't remember the last one, and I'm so happy to have all of you here around me. This is beautiful. beautiful. And this is your reason. Beautiful. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. To meet again, because I don't remember the last one. And now it's I good. can see everybody here, and I'm so grateful. OK. And what, what letter were you? I'm sorry. Uh, e. 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 So who has F? Yasko. Who was Jesus? What does he mean to you? That's a very interesting coincidence. This was not, I, people, I give it randomly to people. Yeah, people that knows me, uh, I was raised as a Buddhist. And early times in Brazil, it was a big pressure from the Catholic Church to everyone to be Catholic. And uh, my grandparents kind of got annoyed. So in my household, we were almost not allowed to worship Jesus. And one way uh, that they scared us somehow, and I think it doesn't need to do that, but everyone, if you see Jesus in a cross, bloody Jesus, that was already scary for children. So they didn't need to do much for me to be scared and not wanted to see Jesus close to me. Okay, But life goes around, of course. If you need to learn, you have to learn. So I end up in the Spiritist group, which is mainly based in Christianity, Christ's teaching. So I have to get somehow uh, OK with Jesus and face Jesus, actually, outside of this Jesus in that cross. And by, I'm very happy. And the question is, he means to me, actually, means really, not what is written only in the Spirit's book, a guide and model. So each time I have uh, some doubts, I would ask myself what Jesus would do in this circumstance. Uh, because it must be correct. Because some friends, some guide, some guru, you may still doubt if they have the correct answer. And I think the best part of Jesus that I am learning it's not the miracles that he performed, but the educator. He is a great, great educator and a great psychologist. He never put down anybody. He had always a good word to put us up and still give the lesson. So good educator is a good psychologist too, so that's how I start to love him and have Jesus almost in my thoughts more spontaneously without making big effort. That was very beautiful, Yasko. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who shared and uh, was courageous enough to hug and to share their, what they're grateful for and everything else. And Jeanette, also for answering the questions, kind of put you guys on the spot. But the point is for us to take this moment to reflect on reincarnation and Jesus. Because in this life, if we look at life from just a one life person, one singular lifetime, we can find ourselves suffering tremendously. But if we remember and remind ourselves 
that we live many lifetimes and that what we're experiencing today has an expiration date for the good and the bad and that new experiences, better and better, will come along for us and that we just have to hold on and as the song goes, um, Jesus take the wheel sometimes, have faith, and keep rolling with it, and keep going with it. The point is to keep moving forward. Don't remain stagnant. So I want us to just reflect on our reincarnation so far. Age means nothing. Our physical age doesn't, it's just for us on the planet Earth. But our spirit's age is probably unknown at this point to us. So we could have lived thousands of lifetimes already, having thousands of experiences leading up to this point. So let us do our best that we can possibly do every day to be our best, whether it's praying daily, making an effort, setting affirmations, setting goals for ourselves, forgiving others. And most importantly, Joanna says again and again, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. And it's good to say that affirmation, even if you can't even recall anything that you've done wrong at all. But remind yourself, I forgive myself. I'm not perfect. I'm going to make errors, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to get up. I'm going to rise up and keep moving. I do highly encourage you all to get this book once it does come here to the SSB eventually. You can also purchase it online, but it is coming in the mail. It's just been backed up. It is an amazing, and it's a, sh it's a book with short chapters. So you don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time. You can read it and re-inspire yourself every day. And I recommend you to keep your little piece of paper with you, and you can read it. It has great affirmation on it and something positive to uh, remember as well. This is all that I have for you today. I just wanted this to be something different. Normally, we stand up here at the podium, we do a lecture, then we offer questions and answers. But we like to be different and have a different sort of dynamic to keep us all involved and awake and keep learning. So I'm going to open up for any comments or questions. Or if you just want to make comments, it's totally OK. Um, I'm curious about, uh, you, you wrote several questions in the letters. Um, for instance, I'm curious about what are the people in the room is grateful for, or what Jesus means to everybody. You know, So I don't know if we have time to do a round and, and you pick. I don't know what question would you like to leave. But I, I just want to listen others because it's very uh, enriching, you know? Yes, definitely. Would anyone like to share what they're grateful for? Anyone who hasn't spoken tonight? Our new friends in the back, would, would you like to share something you're grateful for? C can we do a, a round? And if you, and if you don't sure. want it, you just pass it. Pass the microphone if you don't want it. Does everyone, is everyone okay with that? It works? I'm okay with it if everyone else, yeah. Just pass the mic if you don't want to speak. Go ahead. I think everybody's grateful for my sweater. Everybody's been saying it's beautiful. So I'm grateful that you are grateful for my sweater. <laughs> All right, since, since I, I'll, I'll, I'll stand up for... The, the torch, you know, since I was best. Um, I think the 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 meeting itself, I'm very grateful for it. Um, you know, as Kirsten started, you know, whenever we have to do evaluation, um, whenever we have to um, come to a point where we have to stop and analyze where we are, um, eventually, when we do this, we also want to analyze where we want to be, which sometimes we forget that part. Um, has a negative connotation, right? The test, the, the stop, and the thinking. Um, so this meeting, you know, I'm very grateful for because with the teachings that, that, that Kirsten is bringing from Joanna DeAngelis, it changes the, the, the whole idea of being negative, being, being put to the test, as she gave the example as well. When we were pointing out that, oh, you're doing this in, a, in the wrong way. Yeah, we all do things in the wrong ways. I mean, we have, we're here to improve. This is the whole thing. So I think that I'm very grateful for this um, different way to analyze ourselves. 
our surroundings and hopefully uh, we can add this piece every time we do this you know, self-analysis that where do I want to be? Where do I want to go? Whether it's a short goal, uh, whether you know it's a long-term goal that you know you're trying to accomplish, um, and we do it as and, and have fun doing it because we know that we're all learning. So, um, if anything, that uh, tonight that I'm grateful for. I mean, when Kirsten again said, you know, the evaluation, it's like, wait a minute, reincarnatory evaluation. That's that's tough. I mean, it's, if you think about it, it's a lot to think about it and 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 analyze, but. Um, just the shift that we have learned tonight, I think that's just something to, to take with ourselves. So thank you. I'm grateful for gratefulness, and I really mean that. I was raised to appreciate and say thank you, but this concept of gratefulness wasn't really something that people spent time on. But the more I have done the gratefulness practice, the more light and joy comes into the day. Even if there were challenges in the day, when you finish the day with this joyful heart, it's just amazing how that builds cumulatively. So I think it's, I, the other thing I was just thinking about is I link gratefulness with forgiveness. And Joanna's message over and over tonight was forgiveness of self and others. And that requires more energy and focus. Forgiveness is work, but when you pair the forgiveness and the gratefulness, it's amazing. Go. As we're going around the room, if anyone has any questions or all, all their comments as well, please feel free to share. So I'm grateful for um, having the doctrine because it was something that I always looked for in my life, uh, understanding, uh, meanings, um, why do I have to struggle for this? And why do I have to go through this? And then uh, that eventually took me to um, realize how blessed I am and uh, many points in my life. And I'm, I'm very, I feel very happy, very content with what I have. I don't have everything. Maybe some people say, what do you, you know, uh, what do you mean? But first for my health, second for because I wanted to come here, and I came, and I built my life, and I, I have my family, and I have the doctrine, and I have friends, and so I, when I start to pile up everything, as Paula said so well, uh, you see, my gosh, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm not the, the person going on TV tonight, however, I feel content with what I was given and what I have, so... You know, uh, without uh, Jesus, I would be very desperate because that's where I go for when I'm in trouble. So that's it. Joni. Well, I'm just a visitor to today, and <clears throat> I think I'm grateful for um, all the, the learning, you know, I have had in my life and the people that I have met, that I have learned things from, from Jesus, and all the learning. I'm grateful for that. Oh, my question, number Z, was for two people. But uh, everybody here, it's very, very important for me because I learn each day when I have some conversation, I learn everything, every phrase everything that they said for me. Então, I'm grateful for everybody in my life. Thank you. Feel free to pass the mic if you don't want to speak. No pressure. I am so grateful. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Sandra. Well, first of all, I'm so grateful to be here. Second of all, I am so grateful that God have given me the chance to be in the uh, earth to the purpose of the mission where he want me to be. And I'm so happy to be here and find what is the mission and be ready with the obstacles of the earth and I know that I'm going to be in better place. Thank you. <laughs> I, 
I'm grateful for kids and babies and cute animals like kitties and puppies and beautiful colors in the flowers and the sky and all the beauty, really, that's what I mean. The beauty in life. And I'm grateful that I have eyes, spiritual eyes, to perceive beauty, kindness, and love around me. Even though on the planet there is a still a large percentage of no kindness and no love, to put it in those terms. But uh, I have been open up my eyes to start perceiving the beauty in life and the beauty in, in people. I'm very grateful for my mom. She was poor, and she took me as the fifth, fifth kid. And I'm very grateful. Because of her, I'm here. I have an opportunity to do everything again, do better, grow. And I'm very grateful for my mom. I love my mom. I'm going to say something. Uh, that may look strange, uh, because we all try to remove our guilty feeling, suffering. Uh, but I am grateful that I, in this incarnation, I don't know if in the previous one I was capable of it, um, of feeling the wrongdoing, <coughs> feeling sorry, suffering, having the pain, having these little guilty feelings. Because probably in many previous incarnations, I was so cruel or was so, how to say, hard, hearted, I may not even feel guilty for the wrongdoing. I was perfectly content, in peace. Can you believe this? And suddenly, even in this existence, I was even talking on Thursday, if I, I just have a glimpse of uh, some behavior, my behavior when I was young or young adult, that I was so harsh, but I didn't even see that, that, that I was making people a little uneasy, uh, painful. And now I just remember, I said, oh my God, you know, so there is a little guilty feeling which I think is, a, is evolving, you know? Is a, so I'm grateful that I'm step forward, that the pain and the guilt is uh, signaling, or you getting there, you know? Now you're able to see, to sense the wrongdoing. So I'm grateful for this evolutionary uh, path. Um. Well, I'm thankful for you know, my mom, my family. I'm thankful for spiritism and all the people I met here. You know, you know her. You know, all all you guys and all our yeah that we've had. You know, all the friends I've made through through this. You know, and all the things you know we've learned and my health and everything. Yeah. Thank you. I'm grateful for the bad and good things that have happened in my life because I learned from both. Beautiful. A good way to end it. Thank you so much, Aloisa. And thank you all so much for participating and being a part of this. And um, if no one has any other questions or comments to make, we're actually going to switch to our... Mo oh, no. Do you have a question or a comment? Oh, okay. Can we pass this along? Oh, it's better with the mic. You have such a pretty voice. <laughs> Because what about the water? So, uh, well, I was going to explain that afterwards, but okay. um, the water is actually just because it's good to bring your water for here to be blessed. And I wanted to make sure that each person has that opportunity to bring their water to be blessed, to bring home with you. But thank you for, you can talk about that now. Yeah, it's really, it's really good to A, drink water. It's better than anything else, better than soda or juice. And B, it's good to bring your water here so the energy and the good spirits can come and, and bless your water. So when you go home, don't allow, don't drink your entire water, although some of us I see already has. 
Leo? That's okay. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. Don't nail yourself to the cross, Leo. Yes, <laughs> you have more water. Oh, there's a little bit left. That's okay. Don't allow your water to be fully gone. Allow just a little bit. When it gets down to a little itty-bitty, refill it again because this, they say the same medicine that's in it, spiritual energies are still in it. It's blessed water for you, so it's very good. And water is just good for us to drink. Yes, and you should bring it every week with you. Bring a small bottle or you can bring a, a one that you can, like Yasko has, it's refillable. Um, so thank you, Jeanette. Any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, guys, we're going to move to our second part of our meeting, which is our uh, passes. Daniel? Yes. So I'm just going to ask you to reassemble our chair.